All right, this is your Gaza War Sit Rep Day 192. Uh, no, I never sight. get used to that number. I can't get used to it no matter how many times I hear it. Yeah, Day 192. So we're going to talk more about the missiles. We know a little bit more about Iran's um, attack. Somebody took issue with the word attack. I think it was an attack, um, whether it was retaliatory or uh, self-defense in nature or justified or whatever. I think it was still when you launch missiles at another country, it's an attack. So I, I, I'm not going to apologize for using that word. Um, so we're going to talk a lot more about that tonight. That's basically what we're going to talk about. But, you know, in, the, in some of the strategic aspects of it, what, you know, deterrence means and and, and what the strategy is that we are watching unfold. But first, some of the news. So Lebanon, interesting on the Lebanon front, uh, the Golani Brigade, which had been fighting in Gaza, one of the early units to withdraw from Gaza, I guess, uh, months ago, actually lost soldiers trying to infiltrate into Lebanon. That's what Hezbollah reports uh, at Tal Ismail by explosive device. So, so I, I've heard several of these. They Do they just try to walk in on foot? Yeah, it's like the border's not super clear. And then they, they try to like come across it and plant listening devices that look mm -hmm. like rocks and, and various things like this. It's sort of the low-level warfare that goes on on that border for like the last 30 years. And it's worth risking men to plant an, a surveillance device because they've lost men doing this several times now. Yeah, I guess the information is worthwhile. Uh, on that note, uh, Hezbollah also reports destroying sh uh, surveillance equipment in Shaba Farms, Kafar Soba, and also attacking Israeli soldiers at Mitat Barracks and Horsh Hanita. So, usual busy. Hezbollah is busy. Uh, West Bank is very busy. Uh, fighting in Tulkaram, Tubas, Janine. Uh, I don't know. You've seen probably, John, lots of prisoners released from administrative detention at the same time as they're taking new prisoners. Yeah, there's no room for them. So they're just there's, turning. There's, yeah, turning there's literally over. no room in their prisons anymore. So they're, they're yeah, turning over. Um, they've been doing it for a little while now, releasing them, not telling anyone they're getting released, releasing them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they've, I mean, they've like, more than doubled the prison population. And yeah, many so of like, them are in camps, but... Some it's like 10,000 or so. And I think 3,300 and some are in administrative detention, which means essentially kidnapped. There's no, almost no legal basis for holding them. Um, settler rampages. Lots of settler rampages. Settlers, armed settlers, Israeli settlers, running around burning cars, destroying businesses burning houses you know good old like crystal knocked kind of pogroms yeah there's been more than 750 settler attacks since october 7th like recordable right uh gaza we saw uh i'm sure you'll break down but there's uh more quadcopter type drones that they're downing and taking over taking them completely intact as yeah, if... not a scratch on them. They're as... landing them completely. And Islamic Jihad showed us the first footage of it in the air. So previously they just showed us them on in mm -hmm. in 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 custody. In custody. Um, but yes. they don't have a scratch on them. So it's not even like they're taking them over and like almost landing them. They're completely landing them. They're commandeering them in the air and landing them perfectly. And these are like, it's not clear what these drones are for. They're not military drones. They have military drones that are encrypted. Um, and, and these are just commercial, these are commercial mm -hmm. drones that, I mean, the, the, the main evidence that we have of them is TikTok videos. Right. Maybe that's what they're for. Maybe they're just to make videos. Um, so lots of fighting in Nusayrat. Again, uh, it's another, it's a shaping up to be another battle there after Khan Yunus because it was a raid, but it's been going on for days and there's shelling, they're reporting mortars, they're reporting 
am a fairly big ambush a little while ago, a couple days ago. So major fighting there. Lots of bombing. Israelis are bombing Jabalia. They bombed Rafa. Um, lots of tortured people coming back from detention as well, with lots of reports of harrowing torture. Children uh, having been tortured. Um, there's a speaking of quadcopters. You probably saw a story about the quadcopter that plays cries of people to try to draw civilians out in order to kill them. So that's a new yeah. low. If we can imagine a new low, we've got that. Um, and then people trying to return to their homes in the north, uh, I guess along the beach kind of road or come under attack from sea and artillery. Uh, and so they kind of abandoned that. Yeah, attempt. a child was shot in her mother's arms. On that uh, that road, walking yeah. that road. Yeah, making making it clear that people aren't able to go home and enforcing um, their military occupation by shooting children in their mother's arms by flying quadcopters that act like crying children. It, it's, yeah, it's it's like a very meticulous depravity. Yeah. Yeah, disciplined Discipline. in its own way. Um, so the U.S., speaking of the U.S., speaking of disciplined depravity, uh, the U.S. is just trying to figure out how many billions they have to give Israel now. So is it going to be 95? I saw 95 billion. That's the biggest one I've ever seen. 17.6 billion. Apparently they spent 1.3 billion yesterday. So <laughs> if that 95 billion could go up and smoke fairly quickly. Um, I saw financial figures that are, Israel has borrowed double. So they borrowed, they borrowed something like 20 billions last year. And this year they borrowed uh, it went up from 2022 and then 2023 it's in the forties and they think they, they're they going to need another 50 billion to prosecute this war. So financial situation is not looking so great. Um, but they, uh, so before we get into the missiles and deterrence and the attack, there's been some talk. The Israelis have said they have no choice. They've told the Americans they have no choice, to, but to respond, um, so I guess we'll have to talk about what they could do. Yeah, and just they, before we finish up on Gaza, though, there yeah. uh, it looks like their Israelis are fixing to reinvade Beit Hanun in the north, which is the first place that they entered Gaza back in November. Do we know uh, people, which which unit or no? No, I don't know who it is actually, but they mm. the people living in the shelters are um, reporting. The war all around them. In oh, Beit Hanun, like a, okay. apparently a oh, ground, like the a ground incursion. I saw some footage from inside an Israeli armored vehicle. They're broadcasting on their Instagram live or whatever it is, giving away positions, talking in the back of their armored vehicle, invading Beit Hanun. Yeah, maybe they'll try to avenge their humiliation. And it's not clear what's happening in Nusrat. I don't if that's expanding mm. their buffer zone, um, yeah. trying to make that a permanent situation, like a, or a longer term situation to try to push people back off that corridor that they're being hit along uh, Netzarim Junction, splitting the north from the south. Um, uh, let's just put up a map again. Why not? Yeah. So they push down through. Zahra. Yeah. And so now they push down to uh, Nusrat there. But again, and Street 10 is Street 10 is where the Palestinians can access. Is that this one or this one? Up high, um, this one here. Go, go in a little closer. I think you zoomed in. Number 10 here. Yeah. Street number 10. So that that's the corridor. Um, so that's Israel this, Israel's this building a highway. Uh, there was a perfectly good highway there. Um, and Beit Hanun is up here, right? Yeah. Over here. Yeah. Northeast. So. There... And bombing in Jabalia, and there's no functioning hospital um, yeah. for the casualties. So it, it's just, I think this is the thing we talked about. This is a, this period feels like a dangerous period where we have this kind of interim from the ground invasion, but 
for the people of Gaza, it doesn't change anything. They're bombed from the air. Um, and if anything, the ground invasions, the Israelis tell them roughly where that's going to be, and the civilians can actually um, you know, know where the space is. But the aerial bombardment just captures, just hits people in their houses. Um, so it's uh, oh. it just feels like this is a period that can go on for a long time because Israel doesn't have troops on the ground that are being... Uh, yeah, being killed, but they have an air force and artillery on the border um, that really has no limits. So, um, and if they don't believe they're getting their their prisoners back alive, um, there's not like a an urgency. I mean, there obviously hasn't been an urgency for them at all. But it feels like this period is yeah, just a really dangerous period where um, it's deadly for for Palestinians, it goes back to the air war period of, of October, you know, when, when people in Before Gaza, the invasion, yeah. yeah, when kids were, you know, kids were chanting, we want a ground invasion because the aerial bombardment and artillery is just so cowardly and so deadly. Yeah. Well, you can't, do it forever without ground troops i've come to realize so there's if there's if it's just bombing there's nothing stopping people from not only going back to their homes but also going and tearing the fence down that only only ground troops can stop that so this is yeah, not i mean it's you're watching over. civilians uh, basically doing civil disobedience right like yeah. refute like going what they did was they they thought that the, if they went in numbers um that there would be some safety in going in numbers and so they went up that corridor along the sea to try to go to their houses because people in Yunis are going to their houses and and people are are the 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 living in the camps, it's not safer in the camps. Um, That's right. And they're they're horrifying. The conditions, the conditions are unspeakable in these camps. The amount, the lack of water and hygiene and food, um, the lack of shelter, you know, the makeshift tents, because Israel's not even allowing proper tents to come in. So all the tents are makeshift tents, and people are uh, would rather go and live in their bombed out houses um, than leave to live in these conditions. And I remember just sort of like, I remember Finkelstein saying like that all Palestinians should just march to the border, right? He used to say that years ago. Uh, he said that before 2018. Yeah, before then they 2018, did it in 2018. And then they did it and got massacred. Well, they got maimed, right? Like that was the most cruel well, yeah. uh, when they would just shoot to maim people. Um, but yeah, the idea that like, oh, if, if the world could see all Palestinians just nonviolently, um, you know, trying to assert their rights. Uh, well, you're seeing that you're seeing it on CNN. It's CNN that's reporting the, 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 the child killed in her mother's arms. It's there to be seen for everybody um, that these people are just, um, you know, carrying out their elementary dignity um, and the, the Israelis they just killed them yeah with various methods at the but but if they're gonna sit offshore with the plan to shoot anybody who tries to go back to their homes then they have to sit offshore and if they can reach them with those weapons then they can be reached so I just strategically speaking this is not sustainable for them either so sooner or later, we're going to see the resistance adapt to this situation as well, the way they've adapted to the hospital attacks, right? The way that they adapted to the, to the Shifa attack the second time. So everything that the Israelis do, they get to do every, every nasty anti-civilian thing they do, they get to do a few times and then the resistance figures it out. It's, it's a contest of, how low they can go on one side and how fast they can adapt on the other side. Um, so are we ready to 
Are we ready? Yeah, I just wanted to get that last part in because the uh, that's just happening tonight. So <laughs> in day ten noon. Okay, so that's new. That's sort of yeah, breaking. So you'll be sit repping that probably in coming days. Yeah. Um, okay. So what do we know that's new? So we we both you did you you were on the EI um emergency live stream. We did an emergency tanky council uh yesterday also just after came out just after you guys finished up i saw that so we covered a lot of things but um i think the few... targets are new i think we weren't super clear on the targeting as of um sunday morning um, right but now we know very clearly that the targets were two desert air bases Yes. Um, and not uh, Tel Aviv, which is the same distance away um, and was not targeted. So yeah, I think you, you probably saw this before and after picture, which was like I thought was some kind of some kind of boast by the Iranians, actually. Did you see this? It's I thought it was like, look, I thought it was Iran saying. I thought it was Iran saying, look, we we I accomplished our goals. That. We accomplished our goals without having to destroy any, you know, anybody's house, anybody's home, etc. But this was actually an Israeli bragging uh that, you know, you didn't do anything. And and you know, as many people pointed out, Israelis are shocked that Iran refused to bomb their schools and hospitals. It's like you didn't even bomb one school, you didn't even kill one, you know, hospital full of people. So the fact that Iran chose military targets and very symbolic military targets. Very symbolic, yeah. It was the F-35 base where the F-35s took off to carry out the assassination of the Quds Force generals. Mm -hmm. um, and, and just also just they picked desert bases. They didn't pick bases that are in cities, which there are. Like you could pick many symbolic targets that were also in civilian neighborhoods because the Israelis use human shields for their military positions. Um, and so Netanyahu, for example, was in a bunker uh, in the defense ministry um, surrounded by civilian, surrounded by civilians. They picked two desert bases that are symbolic and they hit them and they hit them with large ballistic missiles that if they were downed over civilian areas would have caused destruction just with the intercepts. Yeah. So. Um, this, uh, there's a sub stack called Simplicius the Thinker, who mostly writes about Russia, Ukraine, but he did a thing on this attack and he's showing a map here from, well, a couple of maps from, um, this one is from Islamic World News, I guess. And there was also apparently, a tar according to this, uh, there was also an, a, a hit in Golan. So Israeli occupied Syria. An yep. Israeli space in Jabal as Sheikh in the north of occupied Golan. Um, another intelligence base. And uh, this, this in this case is occupied, a part of Syria that's occupied, not uh not occupied Palestine. Yeah. And I think that's the sister base for the base that was targeted in the south there, Ramon. Mm -hmm. That's their southern intelligence base. And then in the north, they hit their intelligence base in the north. So very, very symbolic targets. And they hit them, um, yeah. which is interesting because, you know, it, Iran's missile program, um, the development is hasn't been really used that much. I mean, I guess it was used for that one strike uh, against the U.S. after the assassination of yeah, but Qasem this is Soleimani. so. Just for for I guess um, all the the kind of emergency research that everybody's trying to do about what kinds of missiles there are. Um, so there were three kinds that there were that they used there were drones so called suicide drones and a drone is basically i think people know but it's a plane that doesn't have a pilot so it can do all the things that a plane does 
um, you know, the big Hermes drones or whatever have missiles that they fire and then they fly back and they land and you, they do it over and over again. But then there are so-called suicide drones that just carry a bunch of explosives and then they, they like a plane, they just fly into wherever they're going to fly and they blow up. Um, so that was, that was the first thing that launched. Then there's something that's not too different from that, which is a cruise missile. So a cruise missile has a map, uh, you know, it has a, it has an idea, it has detailed knowledge of where it is in the world and it navigates low on the ground. So it knows what's, what's high and what's low and it, it flies at a fairly high speed and uh, it's easier to shoot down um, or it's, you know, it's a little bit easier to shoot down because it's so low but it has benefits. It has advantages too, because it's so low. So it can, that's why they say things like it flies under the radar and so on. So cruise Iran launched some cruise missiles also. And then there's the ballistic missiles, which are so-called because they go up and then they come down and the ball ballistic missiles can be really, really, really big because, um, of that arc so when they come down they're not using a lot of fuel although um hypersonic missiles and and some of these ballistic missiles can actually in conduct evasive maneuvers on their way down yeah so and i and believe they're... we did see that we did see mm -hmm. footage that appeared to be showing um to be showing that that yeah that the, on its re-entry it can be steered um to hit its target whether it can evade uh, anti-missile systems is not clear, but it can at least be, um, the target can be adjusted on its way down to hit what it wants to hit. And yeah. that's what happened at this air base. And we don't know, you know, the, the Israelis showed us, uh, you know, and the, the Israelis said that the places that were hit on the bases were like always, right. They're empty. They just hit empty buildings, which might be true because the Iranians telegraphed gave them so much time. They gave yeah. them two weeks to yeah. to move everything, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. So you know, the drones after... basically the drones are they go they they go the speed of a car. They yeah. cost the same as a car, um, and so they took hours to fly. <laughs> slowly. Did you see? Did you see Ali Mortada? Yes, Ali Mortada is this Lebanese journalist who who makes videos and he always starts by saying, hello, my enemies. And he says, you know, they're going to kill you of a heart attack because you're going to spend the next nine hours waiting to know. And it this. wasn't even that much of an exaggeration. It took many hours for them to fly. They fly at like a hundred and something kilometers an hour. Um, and then the cruise missiles go a little bit faster. They took a couple hours to come. And then the ballistic missiles are minutes. Um, right. And so the idea is that you send these cheap drones um, to tie up the the air defense systems, and then and then you follow up with the ballistic missiles. That, from Iran's point of view, they've only ever tested them. We've never actually seen them be used for this. Like, I don't know if you have the map there, but I think it's something like fifteen hundred kilometers. Um, oh yeah let's let's do that to travel that distance let's and so that. the okay. iranians have have tested these missiles this the missile program is secret um, um but the 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 yeah. the scale of the attack is how many ballistic missiles they fire after the drones so a lot of attention was put on this is how reasonable. many drones were downed so iran is here and if they want to shoot israel they've got to go all this way so either over saudi jordan or over iraq syria or some somewhere there's a long there's several countries airspace that has to go and and apparently they went over jordan's airspace because because jordan shot a bunch of them down um i'll come back to this map but um but i wanted to say in addition to so when you say it engaged the air defenses that means so israel has like modern militaries like iran does or russia or um well let's leave it at that there's not actually that many china presumably 
they have what are called layered air defense. So they have air defenses for things that are far out and, and then things that get closer and closer. So that's why they claim to have shot down 99.999% of all the missiles that were fired, all the million missiles that were fired that day. Um, but they have a system called David Sling. They have um, American Patriot missiles for the for what's far away. Uh, and then they have the Iron Dome. So all of these are engaged. But the other thing that they engaged was the United States, the United Kingdom, France, and presumably Jordan's air forces, which scrambled their jets and flew and shot the drones down. Because like we just said, drones are planes. You can fly up and shoot planes. Shooting cruise missiles down is another story. Shooting ballistic missiles missiles down is also a different story. That's a little bit... Um, you're not likely to do that from a fighter jet. Yeah, um, so there's actually... And there's an additional layer. They actually... They employed electronic warfare that we haven't seen ever before on this scale, uh, covering multiple countries. Um, basically, in, in the intention is to down the drones by electronic warfare through mm -hmm. um, those countries as, as they were coming. So, and then Iran is building its, um, its drones to try to have uh, capacity to evade um, yeah. And so we, this was this is part of this whole um, revealing your hand thing that that happened, right? Is that um, Iran takes this very cheap, inexpensive um, attack where they essentially force the Americans and Israelis to show very strategic things like how they deploy electronic warfare, how they deploy, um, the layered air defense, which we've actually never seen before, despite you know how billions important. of dollars. Uh, how important Jordan is in the whole system. <laughs> well, Jordan really went for it. I don't know how much you guys talked about that on the on the last. Not show, as much as we should have, probably. Yeah, it's just absolute. It was remarkable, and even just for us who have been following this our whole lives and never thought anything. Uh, you know, didn't think Jordan was anything but that, uh, like collaborator, but. They just really, they re they they admitted that they shot down dozens of them. They shot them down over their own people. Um, so flaming wreckage landing in Jordan. Yeah. Um, while Jordanians, Jordanians didn't cheer, but they all came outside. Like you could see footage from Jordan of like, it was a, a an event. Saturday night was an event. They were out in the streets watching what happened. In the West Bank, they were cheering. In Gaza, they were cheering. So these are people who are underneath this these missiles. They weren't saying, I sure hope the king protects us from these incoming missiles. They were like literally cheering. Um, but yeah, Jordan, um, but they like just really drew a stark line about where they they. They sit in this because these missiles were on their way to Israel. They weren't on their way to Jordan. They weren't going to accidentally hit Jordan. No. And I mean, it's just like everybody who's been talking about this, whether it's Jordan, America, France, Canada, Europe, UK, whoever, they all forgot that Gaza's been slaughtered by bombs for the past six months to the tune of 40,000 people or whatever. They're just like civilians could have died by these missiles. We had to act. We had to stop these missiles. They could have killed civilians and they're kind of pearl clutching in the face of the utter indifference to the genocide that was, is, was happening at the same time un, more or less uninterrupted. It's pretty uh, vulgar. Yeah, it was just a very the 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 air defense, the missile defense array was interesting, but so was the alliance that fought it, um, and the fact that mm -hmm. the yeah the the U.S., U.K., France, Jordan, um, it sounds like the French didn't shoot any down; they were just part of the patrols, and then the Saudis. It sounds like the Saudis just did aerial refueling, but yeah, really takes a village takes a village um so 
Cruz, okay, so Simplicius the Thinker thinks that this was one of the most advanced and longest range peer to peer style exchanges in history. Mm. So mm -hmm. he says, even in Russia, where I've noted we've seen the first ever truly modern near peer conflict. Oh, last night, Iran upped the ante even more because in Russia, such exchanges at least happened directly over the Russian border onto its neighbor. But Iran did something unprecedented by firing these over a multi-domain space, potentially as much as 1,200 to 2,000 kilometers. Yeah. So it's a, it's a major, major deal. But they also just threaded this needle, right? Because they also, it, it's like they intended to not hurt anybody, right? Because that, yeah. that, I think that the real problem of the escalation ladder from the Israeli and American perspective is, is if people had been killed by these missiles. Um, that People may have been killed by these missiles. I don't think, if there were people who got killed on the bases, which is possible, would they, like, the way I see it, I don't think Israelis would just leave the base, uh, like just leave their most important surveillance bases, just leave them. I think at some point there must have been some crew at that base and those people probably were killed. And if they were, Israel would not be telling us. Israel would censor those deaths. That I is mean, true, yeah. But also just the missiles hitting those bases, like those are the bases that your missile defense are trying to protect. It's trying to protect your air force that has the long range jets, the only jets that can actually reach Iran to carry out a strike and you're hitting that. Um, and so that's the thing about the ballistic missiles is that um, if, if Iran was actually trying to do damage, it's not the number of drones. It would be the number of ballistic missiles that followed the drones or, or the drones too, the number of drones to take out, um, to take out more of the air defenses, to, to, to tie up more of the air defenses. They could have gotten Hezbollah to strike at the exact same time with an unprecedented attack, um, uh, from the North that would have, um, taken up another chunk of air defense. So they really did thread this needle, um, trying not to start World War III um, while responding. And, yeah. and and I think I said on this show last week that I I was I was a I'll I'll believe it when I see it about Iran carrying out this attack, and they uh, well, they did. I didn't know. I I I thought whatever they do, if they launch a bunch of missiles, it's not going to be, uh, you know, it's it's just. It, I didn't see how launching a bunch of missiles could be establishing deterrence. I just thought, okay, so they're going to launch a bunch of missiles and then it's it's just it's just going to go on like tit for tat. But this was like if you I I know they're trying to play it down. I know they're trying to show that it to, you know, show that it didn't hurt Israel whatever, but I think this is a very scary thing that they a, a really scary set of capabilities that they've showcased here yeah and and i i think it's clear that this is not the limit nowhere near the limit of what they could have launched and exactly so i you know and they declared the what before anything even hit its target they made an announcement at the united nations we're done this yeah. is we can that's, the, that's the key thing right it, it, they would have had hezbollah attack at the same time and they would have had waves there would have been waves there would have been a second wave and a third wave then there would have been waves of ballistic missiles um and and they that they demonstrated that that c can happen right like they yeah. demonstrated those capabilities and showed that you can hit their most important bases despite the fact that there's like five countries flying fighter jets in the air, despite bill tens of billions of dollars of air defense systems, um, despite two weeks of preparation, they didn't need to give them two weeks. And then they could have nope. responded. They could have done it in waves after that. And they didn't. So this was all very careful. Um, and yeah, the other I, thing mean, I think yeah. if the Israelis had soldiers killed on that base, like I, I feel like that would be something the Israelis would admit and 
and oh, really? escalate. Like Netanyahu's been trying to attack Iran for his whole career, right? Okay, this is a good. This is a good. This is a good. Uh, this is a good opening for the other thing I wanted to talk about because Netanyahu wants to ata- attack Iran, but concretely, logistically cannot. Concretely, what does this mean? So uh, supposedly, supposedly. Israel also has cruise missiles. Supposedly, they have something called the Jericho missile, which can go 4,000 to 6,000 kilometers uh, with a payload of up to 1,000 kilos. Um, So they're saying, what did he say? General, in 2008... Israeli weapons expert General Itzhak Ben Israel said, everybody can do the mathematics. We can reach with a rocket engine to every point in the world. So they have a ballistic missile. They have a cruise missile too called the Delilah. I don't know if we've seen the Delilah cruise missile, but they have the Jericho uh, ballistic missile. They have the Delilah cruise missile and they have their own drones. The question is- But they don't have strategic bombers. And so they need the U.S. in their invasion of Iran. In their attack on Iran, they need the U.S. to participate in that attack. And that's what Netanyahu was trying to get for. So the Israeli Air Force, when they bomb, when they've killed Iranians in Syria, they fly basically to the Syrian border and they launch their missiles basically over Lebanon. That's my, that's what I've read that they do so they they're they're not um they're not keen on engaging even the syrian air defense which has been so degraded over so long but so they kind of take this route and they fire from here now look to just take a look at where they would have to go let's assume jordan Jordan will let them. Jordan will let them go. Uh, it, but um, Iraq could cause some trouble. Uh, and and then Iran has the same kinds of layered air defense, and they have um, a lot more motivation to focus on air defense than Israel does. So I. I think a counter strike by Israel using Delilah's and Jericho's, for example, and drones could end up actually being a humiliating exercise for Israel if Iran shoots it all down. If they if they send if they get if the US gives them planes and the Israelis have pilots for, I don't know, some stealth bomber or something, and those get shot down. Like the the counter attack could end up being a, a debacle for Israel, which is like, that's always the risk, right? That was also the risk for Iran. Iran had to take this calculated risk of what if they do shoot everything down and our uh, big deterrence restoration attack is actually shows that we don't have the capabilities relative to them that we thought we did. So I know, I know people are saying Netanyahu wants this and Iran gave Netanyahu what he wants, but I don't think that's right. I don't think Net- I don't think Iran gave Netanyahu what he wants. I don't think this is what Netanyahu wants at all. The other thing is, like America, okay, America wants a, there's there's definitely people in America who want to attack Iran. But again, the problem is how are they going to do this? What is their plan for doing this? Are they going to try to, and and what's I mean. Suppose they do a bombing raid on Iran, and then Iran follows up with a nice big missile attack from their end, and then we're in a, that's what we're in. But like, are they going to invade Iran? No, so they need U.S. strategic bombers to attack Iran, and then the U.S. doesn't want to participate in that because they have so many troops in the region that are that are vulnerable. So I think that this is a line that's different when, like, when the um, you know, 
the Israelis ignore the Americans about Gaza. This is different than that because this is tens of thousands of American troops and assets, um, you know, that are just really within striking distance, very easy striking distance of Iran. Um, and and I I just don't I don't think the Americans are are going to allow Israel to do that. And because Israel lacks strategic bombers, they need. That, and that's what basically Netanyahu's whole career has been to try to convince the Americans to take out the Iranians. But that's always been a fantasy. And it's more of a fantasy now than it ever has been. Because the logistics are... Virtually impossible. Not tenable. They're not tenable. And, and this is like... The other thing I wanted to kind of touch on before we wrap tonight is I don't know if people have played this game go it's a Chinese game or Wei Chi or go and it's like it's like chess but it's like you're trying to surround your opponent and your opponent is trying to surround you and so I, I just you look at this map and you think has have the Israelis surrounded their enemies you know where you look at at the U.S. bases around Iran, right? So it's like, okay, Iran is surrounded. Yeah. There's the map. That's the map you want to show. Right, but Iran is surrounded. Okay, Iran is surrounded. But now, has Iran surrounded Israel? Because Iraq is mostly with Iran, the, the resistance in Iraq. Syria is with Iran. Lebanon has, has Hezbollah. You know, Egypt, Jordan, Israel, Saudi, pretty solid. But then you have Yemen. Iran, you have the sea, which is increasingly controlled by Iran. So it's a it's a very it's a very dynamic chessboard now where it's unclear who's got who surrounded. And um, and who holds more cards? Yeah, who's in the strategic bind here? Yeah, who's in the strategic bind? What what's Israel's move to get out of this? I mean, I, I honestly I think that this is their their this is their way out of it is that this is their opportunity to negotiate a diplomatic solution that ends all this because it's it's not about the Americans surrounding Iran. It's about how many targets there are. Mm -hmm. of american troops and and oh, i just oh i see i, I yeah. see so when you when you see this map yeah i see the opposite of surrounded i see a target rich environment and we just watched iran use a very sophisticated uh, attack, attack on a much model. more on a much more distant opponent much, yeah and a much better defended defended opponent than any given us base yeah. Any specific U.S. base, whether it's Kuwait or Qatar or Jordan, Jordan is Jordan just exposed itself to serious jeopardy. That is, it's it's a very dangerous thing they just did. Yeah, and their population doesn't want it. Their population chants, you know, in the streets, "We are men of Muhammad Dave." Like they say, like, we, you know, they, they had a dress up like a superhero day and all the kids in the class in, in Amman all dressed up like Abu Obeda or like journalists or like doctors because they're all in involved in watching this war happen. Um, to their people, like to Arab people like them. Yeah. I mean, they're mostly Palestinians in Jordan. Right. And, and so it's not clear that that's a, a good strategic move that the king made and and to just be so a part of that although it's the it's the realization of like 15 or 20 years of american policy in jordan to build up these bases to make the jordanian defense um so integrally tied to the americans and the american bases that uh it's, i mean it's not clear that jordan i was interested to see if jordan said we shot down this many or if they said we were just you know patrolling um but but friends in in, in jordan said today that they there's overflights uh of the jordanian air force obvious to people um and the jordanian army released a 
um, a, a statement saying that they were patrolling. It's almost like they were in the sky trying to show their people that they like remind them that they, cause they made the case that we were protecting our airspace um, on Saturday. And then tonight they're saying, you know, they're doing patrols um, like presence patrols so that the population hears them. Mm -hmm. um, and that, yeah, they're the armed forces releasing statements, like, you know, basically saying like, we're not collaborators, we're not Israelis or like, and if you, and if you say we are, we'll put you in jail. <laughs> Yeah, and the Iranians threatened them, threatened the Jordanians. Um, yeah, of course. Of course, they're the weak link uh, in the whole chain. Of course, they're going to get it worse than anybody else. You, you don't want to expose the weakest link in your defense chain, but that's what they were f evidently forced to do. Yeah, it's not clear where Israel goes right now. It's not clear because there's not there doesn't appear to be any kind of like symbolic strike. It's not clear what what symbolic strike you could have on the Iranians. Especially the now, yeah. Especially now that the Iranians have said anything you do, we're going to hit you back. That's the new world you live in. So, yeah. Think very carefully about what you do next. Yeah, and the Americans said they're not going to be part of a response, right? And 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 it's just different than when they say you have to get aid in and Israel just ignores them. This is this is something that involves American troops. Um so yeah. The it, last yeah, the last thing I wanted to say was you know this is um like this war is so big now like people are like we don't want to set off world war three like i think world war three started a lot a months ago um but um it, like it has to end with israel having no control over palestinians lives like as long as israel can round people up and throw them in prison or prevent them from going from point A to point B in their own land. It's not, this is not going to be resolved. So. Well, they're not getting their prisoners back. I mean, we've, we've said that this, this entire time, the Palestinians yeah. are not giving their soldiers back. So if Israel's plan is to just drag this out indefinitely, then they're not going to be able to declare victory in Gaza. They're not going to be able to get their people back. Hamas is going to reconstitute itself on a municipal level. Mm -hmm. um, and the, we know that the the as an armed fighting force, as an army, that they have Qassam hasn't been defeated as an army. So there's there's just nothing the Israelis get out of that. And and then now they have a situation with Iran where they, you know, that their airport the Israelis airport is closed. And then the first minute they open it, there's just like a flood of people at the airport today. And I don't know if those photos are just I don't like know either. timely photos or what, but the I, airport was jammed. Yeah. I also don't know what that was. Maybe there was some closure in another Maybe building. Maybe there's multiple flights at the same time. There I don't might know, have been some cancellations. Like, I've been in that airport a lot and it doesn't, didn't use, it didn't look, doesn't like, look that. like that. Yeah, and I mean that's what you you probably saw that quote from that story by Ronan Bregman or Bergman, yeah, where he said if people had overheard yeah. the discussions about Iran, yeah, they're, and his they're... sources, he's like the basically the like the the writing wing of of Mossad and the Shabak. That the his sources are Mossad and Shabak sources, um, and Israeli military intelligence. Um, and and they yeah, said, he writes these things in Hebrew that he would never dare write in the New York Times, even though he's the New York Times correspondent. But to finish the quote, he said, if you were in those, if you were in that discussion, if it was broadcast on the Internet, four million Israelis would be clamoring to get out at the airport right now. Wow, the, dude, the Israelis were running around screaming in the footage of them. They're all running and was screaming. Was that real? Was that Saturday from a concert night. or something? I, <laughs> it's, I, this I is skeptical. the hard part. That yeah. There's so much 
to filter through. Yeah, um, that didn't and, look right. That didn't ring right to me. That particular video that I saw. Yeah. It's like, why? Why? If they had so much notice, why would they even be out in the street in those numbers? I, was, I, I mean, was did suspicious. you hear the alarms? Like there was there was alarms all over the country. The sirens were sounding. Um, yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if it was real, but you're right. We we didn't have a way of vetting that video. There's a lot of videos. I mean, the Israelis showed videos that uh, of strikes that weren't from that night, and so did the Iranians. Mm -hmm. uh, and then both, yeah, the it's just it's tough to verify all these videos, but it's just incredible now that everybody has a phone that you, you know, like Israel has a military sensor, but did you see the footage of the uh, ballistic missile uh, booster? Somebody's standing beside it and it's like the size of a building, basically. Um, there, it, you can't keep all of it secret at this point in this technology, technological, at this stage of technology. Yeah. Um, we, we saw it, we saw the, you know, we, we don't need the news. There was, you yeah. know, watching Al Jazeera didn't give us anything more. It gave us analysis from their guests, but we were using, we were reporting the story based on people's cell phone videos. Mm -hmm. And we will keep reporting the story based on people's cell phone videos. Um, all right. So what have we got this week? You're doing a follow-up on Wednesday, you guys? Um, Wednesday, we have uh, Paul Bigger on to talk about artificial intelligence. And um, I think we might have a guest from Gaza, which would be really great if the technology holds up. And then, yeah, I'll do... I'll do some video breakdowns because the Sorrel Sorrel Kuds released some videos that they take a bit longer to get their videos out. So they uh, released a couple videos from Khan Yunus um, that I'll do. You might get a Nusayrat ambush video by yeah, that. There's a lot of fighting along that corridor in the last 36 hours that may result in videos. And if they're going to invade Beit Hanun, mm -hmm. um, there's significant resistance in Beit Hanun that uh, I expect we'll get videos from. All right, guys, like and subscribe and hang on. We'll be back. See you in the next one. See you guys.